Welcome to the end, my friend. This is the last section of element two, the technician license study exam. We're still talking a little bit about safety here. And uh, here we go. What type of radiation are radio signals? They are non-ionizing radiation, meaning that it may sound like radiation, but it's non-ionizing. So keep that in mind. It, it, it's not radioactive. <laughs> okay. At which of the following frequencies does maximum permissible exposure have the lowest value? Out of these choices, surprisingly, it's 50 megahertz. And the human body's weird. Don't understand why. But you could go find out. I bet if you Google that one. How does the allowable power density for RF safety change if duty cycle changes from 100% to 50%? 100% might be if you key down your radio for a minute solid, that would be 100%. Now let's say that you go a minute on, uh, uh, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So then the power density actually increases by a factor of two. So it's directly proportional to your duty cycle. What factors affect the RF exposure of people near an amateur station antenna? Well, that is all of these choices are correct. The frequency and power level of the RF field. So if you're running 1.5 kilowatts, there ain't going to be nobody that's going to want to be near that. Distance from the antenna to a person. So you have power, you have distance, you have frequency, and then you have the radiation pattern of the antenna. So if it radiates all around, you got to watch it all around. But if it's a Yagi antenna that has forward gain, being in front of that antenna is really going to be a bad idea. You could be, you would have to be further away from the front of the antenna than the side of the antenna where it has a null. So all of these choices are correct. And while we're at it, every amateur radio operator is expected to do a site safety evaluation. You have to do it once unless you make a change to your station. And you don't have to submit it to the FCC. You just have to keep a record of it at home in case the FCC needs to inspect it. Why do exposure limits vary with frequency? And I just said the human body is weird. The human body absorbs more RF energy at some frequencies than at others. Question six, which of the following is an acceptable method to determine whether your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? Another, all these choices are correct. You can use the calculation based on the FCC OET Bulletin 65. You can use your web search to find that. By calculation based on computer modeling. By measurement of field strength using calibrated equipment. Now, I've used computer modeling and using the OET Bulletin 65. I prefer to use that because it's faster. All these choices are correct. What hazard is created by touching an antenna during a transmission? You will get an RF burn to the skin. And depending on how much power you're running determines how bad that burn's going to be. Even at 5 watts, RF burn can be surprising at the least. Which of the following actions can reduce exposure to RF radiation? That is to relocate your antennas. Out of those choices, relocating the antenna is the only way to reduce exposure. How can you make sure your station stays in compliance with RF safety regulations? We just talked about this, didn't we? Just in an aside. By reevaluating the station whenever an item in the transmitter or antenna system is changed. So if you go from a simple dipole to an eight element Yagi, your gain's increasing somewhere, but you made a change to your station, so you got to go check it out. 
Why is duty cycle one of the factors used to determine safe RF radiation exposure levels? It affects the average exposure to radiation. Now remember, it's non-ionizing radiation, but it's radiation nonetheless that we have to be aware of. The answer is it affects the average exposure to radiation. And with that bulletin, that is what they're looking at, is the average exposure to radiation. What is the definition of duty cycle during the averaging time for RF exposure? That is the percentage of time that a transmitter is transmitting. The percentage of time that a transmitter is transmitting. That is the only correct answer out of these choices. Question 12. How does RF radiation differ from ionizing radiation, which is radioactivity? Notice I mentioned that radioactivity earlier. RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to cause chemical changes in cells and damage to DNA. So all it can do is really burn you. Uh, RF radiation does not have sufficient energy to chemically alter your body or DNA. That's good to know if you need to explain it to somebody who's worried about your radio station. And the last question in this exam poll. Who is responsible for ensuring that no person is exposed to RF energy above the FCC exposure limits? You, the station licensee. I hope you've enjoyed this 35-part study session. I hope you the best, and I hope that you pass that test. I'm Rob W1RCP73.